Um, my name is Benjamin Alloy. I graduated in May 2020 from the Master of Public Policy program at Simon Fraser University, and the title of my capstone was Enhancing Consumer Choice and Competition in American Beer Markets, an Analysis of Vertical Restraints on Craft Brewer Entry and Growth. Um, so I'll just begin now then. Yep, yeah. okay. Um, so in pre-prohibition America, it was common for bars, pubs, and other alcohol serving establishments to serve only one brand of beer. These so-called tied house arrangements between brewers and retailers permitted patrons to consume tremendous quantities of alcohol at low prices and virtually eliminated competition in entire towns or neighborhoods of a city. A uh, system also served to exacerbate a wide range of social ills, including rampant alcoholism and organized crime. With the advent of prohibition in 1920 came the end of the legal tied house in the United States, as well as the destruction of hundreds of American breweries. Uh, the second clause to the 21st of uh, this 21st amendment to the constitution is best remembered for repealing prohibition but equally important was its second clause which effectively devolved the power of regulating alcohol importation distribution and sales to the states rather than the federal government and what arose in this post-prohibition era particularly after world war ii was a complex tapestry of state level systems wherein a legally mandated or de facto wholesaling industry came to act as an intermediary tier between brewers and retailers and these state level systems were collectively referred to as the three tier model. They were designed explicitly to uh, prevent these, prevent the uh, formation of tied houses that had existed before prohibition. However, in recent decades, uh, the system has presented three major vertical restraints on market entry and distribution opportunities for craft brewers, which in turn impedes consumer choice and competition. So number one, the ability of large brewing conglomerates such as Anheuser-Busch AMBEV or AB AMBEV and Miller Coors to exert considerable influence over the brand portfolios of their distributors and thereby disincentivizing them from carrying or promoting competing brands. We've seen this most often in the case of exclusive dealing arrangements, wherein the distributor will largely align their brand portfolio with one major supplier in exchange for an exclusive sales territory over their brands. Number two, the persistence of beer franchise laws in most states, um, which grants wholesalers an asymmetric power to terminate or alter the distribution contract with a brewer. Now for the uh, company like AB AMBEV that has their legal resources and market sway, these beer franchise laws have proven little more than a technicality. On the other hand, craft brewers typically lack the financial means to enter a prolonged legal dispute for control over their brand and thus have little recourse in the event that a wholesaler underachieves or engages in distribution practices that would otherwise hinder the success of their business. And finally, in recent decades, large brewing conglomerates such as AB AMBEV have targeted successful craft brands for acquisition and aggressive expansion, most notably in the case of Chicago's Goose Island Brewing. And what this has allowed them to do is maintain the illusion of consumer choice while still dominating tap handles across the country. And in a sense, um, wide, de facto tied houses remain widespread across the United States with loyal AB AMBEV and Miller Coors distributors often acting as the company's foot soldiers in their relations with retailers. So we can see from these three vertical restraints that exclusive dealing arrangements are replicated at every stage in the supply chain.